everybody. Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, the, uh, the 2024 Horeska Clinic shoe list is here. Uh, we waited for the last of the shoes to arrive to our local shoe store this past Friday. And so we sat around as a staff a couple weeks ago. We looked at over 20 different shoes. Um, and so we're really excited to present to you some shoes that um, we think are going to come back on the list that are very promising that it might assist you, um, our patients, and you as a healthcare provider um, with the PRI program, and also some shoes that we don't think are going to be very integrative with your program that are going to go off the list. One update that I wanted to give you, um, I did a video about this shoe earlier um, this fall, but the Brooks Dyad 11, they are discontinuing the shoe, and the shoe is being replaced by the Brooks Ghost Max. And this is not the sh same shoe. Number one, the liner in the uh, Brooks Ghost Max is different than the Dyad. The Dyad had more of a, had bubbles on the bottom, and it had more of a give to allow the foot to work with the shoe. And this has a completely different liner in the shoe, so it's not going to be a good neuroceptive shoe for the foot to work with the ground. The heel counter with this shoe is good, but something that we don't like as a staff is how limited the toe box is. It's very, very stiff. And that would be okay if you have someone that cannot pull their big toe joint up. They don't have normal range of motion with their big toe. Remember, these are... Um, First, ray mobility, we want it to be normal where the toe can pull back towards the head. And if you put someone in a shoe that has limited ability to bend at the toe box, they're going to overwork hip flexors in the back. If you have someone that can barely pick their toe up and they're limited here because the joint's been used at the big toe, or they have arthritis or they have a really bad bunion that is causing their big toe to be limited with range of motion, then a shoe that's limited in the toe box is, is fine. But th that's not fine for the vast majority of individuals. So we'll put this in our limited first ray mobility category um, because the, the con or the pro with this shoe is it has a wide last with it that might make this work really well with an orthotic. If you take a look at some shoes where they get more narrow here in the last of the shoe, Sometimes getting an orthotic to sit down in that shoe can be a little challenging. So if you have someone that has limited first ray mobility and they need an orthotic, this might be a shoe for them and we'll put it down in that category. But it's not even remotely the same shoe as the Brooks Dyad. We've kind of had a little bit of a debate. I don't think we're going to use this shoe very much, but we'll put it on the shoe list. I don't think a lot of your clientele will be using this shoe. I did want to update you, uh, two shoes are coming back on our shoe list, the A6 Cumulus 26, which I have here, and the A6 Keanu 30. And I will be honest with you guys, when I first looked at the shoes without putting them on and walking around in them, I did not know that they were going to go on our shoe list. I thought maybe they could be too cushiony. And if you look at trend right now with a lot of shoes is for the heel to come up. Well, the difference with the Cumulus compared to like a Saucony shoe, or even if you look at the On Plow shoe here, there's a trend right now with a lot of shoes for the heel to scoop up and the toe to scoop up. Well, if you look at the On Plow shoe, you guys, look, that's all the part of the foot that's going to hit the ground because this heel scoops up and this comes up. So... This is going to be very limited and not good for the middle part of the walking cycle when people are moving forward. So when I initially saw the Cumulus and the Keanu and I saw the heel scoop up, well, there's heel scoop up is behind the heel of the Cumulus and um, it does not cause you to rock backwards. So here's something I'm really excited about. Remember, ASICS has a really far superior heel counter. Um, in the past, if you look at how narrow the, this cumulus is compared to, like if you look at the Ghost Max, or even if you look at the Adrenaline, that we love this on our shoe list, can you see how narrow the cumulus is compared to the Adrenaline? 
this is really good for patients that have had ankle sprains, plantar fasciitis, or um, Achilles tendonitis, that they really need to feel a heel hug around their heel. So having a narrow heel counter can be very powerful, and we love the cumulus for that feature in the past. Well, last year, it got really stiff at the toe box. Guess what? It's more flexible at the toe box, so we're really excited about that. But here's what I'm really excited about with both the Cumulus and the Keanu. You guys, it has give in the sole of the shoe. And I thought it was going to be really way too cushiony, kind of like walking on a cloud. But if you have people that have difficulty or challenges with their middle part of their foot resupinating or pronating, this shoe is going to allow the foot to learn how to work with the shoe. So sometimes if you have foot and ankle weakness, you have a history of an ankle sprain, sometimes the foot can fight the shoe. And with this giving on the sole of the shoe, it's going to actually retrain your patients for how for the foot to work with the shoe and help them to feel the ground underneath it. I am so excited. And the Keanu just has more arch support, so they're really more directive for people that have more of an average arch. So they're going to have a little bit more arch support. The Cumulus doesn't have as much arch support, so it might work better with someone with an orthotic. Or um, with someone that has a high arch that needs a little bit more range of motion in order to repronate or roll their midfoot in. But both shoes, both the Keanu 30, number 30, and both the A626 have that good neuroceptive give of the sole of the shoe. And I think it's going to be one of our top neurosensory shoes to help people find the ground underneath their shoe and for their foot to work with the shoe. I'd love to get your guys' feedback. I've been running around in the Keanu for almost the last two weeks, and I'm really excited about the potential this shoe has for some of my patients. Another shoe, um, uh, the Glycerin 21 is out. The Glycerin 20 is on our shoe list, but it was in a limited mobility category because it had a really... Um, stiff toe box last year. Well, guess what? The 21, you guys, it bends at the toe box. It brought that flexibility back, which is desirable for the normal range of motion of our toes to get to the push-off phase of walking or running. And they did that with both the GTS and the 21. So what gets confusing with these shoes is they're both called the Brooks Glycerin. The Brooks Glycerin GTS 21 has a guide rail system, and this is desirable for people that need more arch support or more arch sense. And so call this kind of like the big sister or the big brother for your patients. Guide rail, big arch, directed for someone that maybe has more of a high arch foot. The other thing I like about this shoe, it has a little bit wider last. It's not as good as the Brooks Ghost mask that I showed you, but it is a little bit wider. Um, than if you look at the cumulus. So this might make it um, good to work with some orthotics. And then the Brooks Glycerin does not have GTS in it. It does not have the guide rail system. And this could work really well with orthotics. It has a wider last. And it doesn't have as much arch sense. So it'll work really well with orthotics. And it could also work really well with some of their, their midfoot is really rigid. And it needs more range of motion to be able to come down to be able to repronate during that mid stance phase of the walking cycle. So these are back on our list, but they're not back in the limited mobility category. The Brooks Glycerin 21 is going to go in our high, high arch category. And the Brooks Glycerin GTS is going to go in our average arch category. Very confusing because they have the same name, just this shoe has GTS in it, and the other one does not. So let's talk about, for individuals that are maybe a little bit larger in stature or have a really lapsed foot and they need more support, we put on the Brooks Beast, which is for men, and the Brooks Aerial for women. So if you have people that are a little bit larger frame, uh, they have a really lapsed foot or ligament laxity in their foot, and they need a really supportive shoe. Um, have you guys considered the Brooks Beast or the Brooks Aerial? Uh, remember, the Beast is only designed for men, and the Brooks Aerial is designed for women. 
The last thing that I want to go through with you guys is there is a shoe that has come off of our shoe list. The New Balance 880 version 14. The version 13 we still like, but the version 14, they did the scoop up with the heel. And where this is scooping up, the heel is back behind it. So here, here's my heel is where this is scooping up in the back. When you put this shoe on, you guys, your the whole front part of the foot comes up and it's like you're seeking back on your heel. I don't want that much of a dr zero drop shoe because it's going to make it really hard to propel forward to walk or run. Um, it still bends at the toe box, has a good kill counter, but what they're doing at the back end, um, this is not going to be a good shoe on our shoe. This is not going to be a good rehab shoe. So this shoe is not on our shoe list any longer. Version 14 of the New Balance 880. The New Balance 860, which is the big sister or the big brother of the 880, as more our support, is still on our shoe list. Version 13, that shoe does not get upgraded until June of this year. The last thing I want to talk about is we do have hokas on our shoe for average arch, high arch, or low arch individuals. And I want to make a friendly reminder that very few people should be in this category. Very few people have limited ability to pull, have limited range of motion at their big toe joint. Yet these shoes are all of the rage right now. And um, I think they're too cushiony. Um, if when you are limited, look, you guys, I can barely bend up that toe box. And if you're putting someone in a shoe that has normal range of motion with their ability to pull their big toe up and you're putting them in this stiff of a shoe, they are going to overwork their hip flexors and their back extensors. And when that happens, the pelvis can fall forward and they're not going to be able to alternate their pelvis. Again, this shoe is desirable for people that have limited mobility at their, their big toe joint, not people that have normal range of motion. So we're leaving it on the shoe list, but that category really should not be going under on that shoe list. Understand why the shoes are under the category that they are. Um, the Saucony Echelon, the Saucony Omni are off the list. There's a big trend right now. I call it a rocking horseshoe. Um, and this is all the rage right now, and I hope this rage goes away. Uh, because when we see patients that are coming in with a rocking horseshoe, like this on cloud shoe, I've had Achilles ruptures. I have had Achilles tendonitis. Um, I've had more stress fractures with this type of shoe, and I know our local running store stores also experiencing similar injuries with runners that are coming in. I want to let you know that the reason why we look at running shoes is because walking and running have the same mechanics. And so that is why we look at running shoes. And so all of our patients have to walk throughout the day. It just happens to complement a lot of running shoes because walking and running are the same mechanics moving forward. One is just a little faster than the other one. So when you look at our shoe list or you watch our informative video with why, what we, why we look at shoes the way we do, I want you to know that you can take the criteria that we look for in a good shoe and you can apply that to a hiking shoe. You can apply that to a basketball shoe. You can apply that for a court shoe, which would be playing pickleball or playing tennis. Remember pickleball, tennis, or volleyball, your athlete's got to be able to move from side to side. So you really need to look more at a cross-training shoe. It's going to allow for a little bit more flexibility to move side to side than a running or walking shoe. A running or walking shoe is not desirable for when you have to go dig a volleyball. Look at a volleyball shoe and apply the criteria to it. Look for a shoe for a tennis or pickleball, a cross-training shoe, and apply the criteria that we look for in a good shoe to that shoe. You can also do that for casual shoes. Unfortunately, one year, my colleague Jason and I went around and we looked at casual shoes, and it took us 16 hours to put together a shoe list for men and women, and guess how long that shoe list lasted for? Less than a month and a half, and it was a lot of work. Those shoes cycled too quickly. Running shoes or walking shoes stay around for about a year and a half before they change them out. So, I hope this was informative. We appreciate your patience. We are so excited that you guys tune in and watch our informative um, information about shoe list, both our patients and our colleagues across the world and the country. 
Um, we appreciate you guys respecting our intellectual property um, with the shoe list, and please keep it the Horeska Clinic shoe list. It originated here. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day.